Okay, the first thing that we do with the hopper is we're going to cut the parts of the body. So I'm just going to go ahead and this is a size 10 kit and everything here is here that you need. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, start with the wing. And so for the wing I'm just going to use some of the uh, river foam. It's the Uh, wing sheet material. This is a light tan color and simply put the material down on the cutter pad and just position this where I want it. And then just trim and that's the wing. Okay. The next part is the hopper body. And again, that's very simple. We're going to take some 2 millimeter foam, just like that. Again, place that on our cutter board, our cutting pad. And try to get it as close to the edge as I can. Press it down. And we've got our piece, and we actually do two of those. So we'll just do the next piece there. Okay, and we've got our two body pieces. Let's lay that there. Okay, the next thing is the legs. This is, uh, is going to allow you to cut some nice looking legs, real proportion legs. And so I just take my, this is one millimeter foam, set that down on the cutting pad as well and press like so and we'll just do that again for a second leg and there's our other leg. Now I usually just cut these and make piles of the different uh, body parts that I'm going to need. And then the last piece is the pronotum. Now you can use the half a millimeter foam, which is what I'll do here, but I also like to use this in the one millimeter foam and just chop or, or squish it down to shape. But we'll go ahead and cut one in the 0.5. And what you do here is we just fold over the foam like so and then just position the edge right in the middle where you want that to cut press down and that's the pronoto okay and that's it now we're gonna go ahead and tie this up All right, for an extended body this is the Renzetti extended body tool and you could probably do this with the paper clip or some such but uh, this is a less headache for me. I'm going to go ahead and attach the thread on the piece right here and then I bring it across keeping it tight and then just build up a little thread on the piece there. The same thing applies to any type of extended body. In this case for the hopper we simply take the two pieces of foam and split them down the middle of this tool now the same principle will apply with any extended body that you do. You simply bring the point of the tool even about with where you want that first wrap to be. In this case, just right at the end of the hopper body. And depending on how you want the segmentation, you may want this tight or not. I don't want it too terribly tight. And the way you do it is you bring it up to go to the next segment. If you don't want the uh, thread to show up, you just push that piece away, bring your thread up down through the middle there, and then just begin the next, the, the next segment where you want that to be, like so. Okay. Then we'll do the same thing 
bring it up to the top, so your thread's at the top, we push out the front piece of foam, bring it underneath, then do the next segment. That just makes it cleaner so you don't see that crisscrossing of the, the thread going to the next segment. Okay, now in this case, I'm just doing five segments. So on that last one, I can either give it some half hitches or what I like to do is whip finish. So we'll just throw the whip finishes on there. Make sure it's tight. And then we go ahead and snip this. Now, the reason this is here is if you had a smaller extended body, in this case with a hopper, I don't need to do this, but with mayfly bodies or drake bodies, you may want to, as you tie this on the hook, pull this tight and it will actually give that extended body some curve, but in this case I don't do that. This just helps keep it set. I don't even need this. Trim that off. And then just pull that off, and there's our extended body. Okay, the hook that we're going to use for this is a wide gap hook. I really like the Mustad C49S, uh, especially on hoppers and other foam patterns. It, that wide gap really makes a big difference on the uh, hooking. And one of the things I see people commonly do when it comes to hopper patterns is they try to use a hook with a really small gap, and they've got this huge amount of foam. So I like this to be very nice and big. So what I'm going to do is first kind of gauge where the hopper is going to go on the hook and basically what I want to do is I want to tie this in at about just in front of the hook shank or the sorry the hook point like so and I want to give this a shot of crazy glue just to give that a little more bite so I'll take that body and again I want to split the distance between there's the little notch here in where I'm in, the head is and I want to split that distance and make that tie in point right there right at the hook point which should give us the front of the foam being uh, the bot the head here being right at the eye of the hook so just like that and we'll lay that down onto the hook and set that down there and just apply a very quick, not too, not too tight, okay, like that, and see how that gives us a nice big gap. So we've got a lot of foam here, and then you want to make sure that the hook is buried all the way up in that foam. We'll take care of this here in a second. Okay. Now the next thing I'm going to do is tie in the legs. And I tie them right here at this first tie-in point. Tie in the second one. It gives us that nice hopper leg profile. And I'll trim the excess here. Right, now I'm going to take a little bit more of this crazy glue, or super glue, whatever you want to use, and work that right down into the area between the two pieces of foam and onto the hook. I want to do that, and then very quickly we're going to make our last wrap, similar like we did with the actual extended body part. Bring that up, pull that forward, bring our thread down in between both of them, and then right at that notch, again with those River Road foam cutters, you can make that really nice and precise. It gives you the exact point to make that last segment for the head, like so. Okay, that gives you a perfect silhouette of the hopper, both the bottom and the side. This thing's going to sit in the water a little bit. Okay, now 
for the legs. I'm going to tie in some baby legs alive. And this is just going to be done with one piece. Tie it in on this first piece here. Wrap it around. Tie it in on the other side. And then we can move the... You want to move the legs down to the lower part of the body. Like so. Alright, the next piece we're going to grab the the river foam wing, which we cut as well, and lay that down just so that the end is extending just beyond the body by a little bit. And then what will happen when we tie this in, obviously as we pull that foam, it's going to flare up. So what I usually like to do is hit that with a little bit of super glue or crazy glue right across the top of the foam. Give that a second or two. Lay that down. And that will make that nice and even across the back. Okay. And then the last little piece here is the pronotum. And that's that little uh, piece across the back of the hopper. It gives it kind of that pronounced hump on its back. Now you can go, do this one of two ways. You can either glue it like we're going to do, or I also like to tie them in. You can actually just tie that right uh, on top. But either way, because we're, because we're going to uh, glue this one, I'm simply going to whip finish right now. Then once we've whip finished, I'll just go ahead and grab some of the super glue and spread that on the areas where the pronotum will be. You can also, if you want, since this is relatively small, it's usually easier to put it there, but you can also, uh, if you have some tweezers or something, just glue it on that way as you hold it with the tweezers. And then we just glue this on and wait a couple seconds. Okay, once the pronotum is glued on, or if you tie on, whichever way you want to do it, the final thing is going to add some color. So the first thing I'll do is I'm going to grab a black Sharpie and give this hopper some eyes. And then I'm going to take a couple of different colored brown mar uh, Sharpies and color up the legs. And that's why I don't cut them, so that I can grab them like that. And I just like to give them alternating light, dark, and white bands. Not so much to be the natural, but also to indicate movement like any barred materials would do. Then you can also come around and just make some markings so that it's not a solid tan color on the legs. Nothing fancy, just color them up a bit. And the body. And one thing I like to do is on the bottom I like to give this some markings as well because the hoppers are not solid and this is the part the fish will see. So something like that. Nothing fancy. Trim these legs to shape. These are a shorter leg. And there we go.